and welcome to the Gadget Spot. Yeah, it's you, been two weeks. Welcome back. You did that on purpose. Sure yeah, did. You oh. did. Didn't get interrupted this time, you jerks. I Weird. was I was talking with Owen about it. I, I was trying to comprehend, but I don't lead, read lists very well. I took advantage of that. Uh, talking man. to Owen about uh, hijacking the yeah, stealing intro. it. Yeah. Yeah. Really? He's the only one that hasn't done it yet. He's got to do it. I'm loyal to, to, to Tony's leadership. Thank you, Owen. Is that why you're wearing red today? <laughs> Leadership. Yeah. Your rewards will be many. <laughs> yes. <laughs> once the ascension has happened. Yes. I think you m- confused that word. Instead of a P at the end, you needed a T. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what, High what, five yeah. that. What? what uh, I don't get it. Never I think mind. Leadership. L- loyal. Le- le- no. Leadership. Loyal. Loyal. I was going for loyal. <laughs> wow. That doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> okay. James needs, go James needs about 15 more minutes for that uh, energy drink to kick in. Yeah, yeah. so here's and the deal. And you need a few seconds to finish eating that Thin Mint. Yeah, uh, it's so good. Nah. If you are if you don't live in Utah, um, for one, congratulations. But two, hey. um, the way that stuff Funny. pollinates here is it like super pollinates all at once. And the last several days, it has looked like I'm watching Ryan Gosling movies, like nonstop and just bawling my eyes out. Hmm. And I cannot find a uh, anti-sleepy one. Did you watch La La Land? No. Is it good? Oh, it's so good. It's not that good. It's really good. I disagree. I watched uh, Life Animated about an autistic kid and I cried. And was it good? It was really good. Yeah. I only watched the preview, the trailer. And thanks, Owen, for not putting up Brick. I appreciate it. What was Brick? Is that a TV show or a person? No, no. James said, put up Life Animated, and right afterwards I said, and Brick! Exclamation oh, point. See, Isn't no. Brick on Netflix? Is that a person, no. place, or a thing? No, it used to be. Oh, well. It's a yeah, movie here. by Ryan Johnson. Oh. oh. Well, I don't know that. I received two. Director of The Last Jedi. I'm like an old networking device. I can't. I received two commands almost simultaneously, <laughs> and I ignored one. One wow. literally did not even make it to the memory. You had a collision. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there was a collision there. So <laughs> brick, I will, I'll, I will get that. There's so much tech awesome. jargon. If it's not too late to earn your esteem, brick isn't tech jargon. It's a movie. <laughs> you didn't. Receive you it think you fine. ever had a chance at earning Jaren's esteem? You should have seen how happy he was when I put on. Oh, did you uh, say something? Murder I baked. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was very happy. Jaren yeah. loves his Hallmark Mysteries. He does. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Hallmark oh. Mysteries. It's no. feel good oh. entertainment. Okay? And then the three sequels that I found. It's terrible. I didn't even know there were three sequels. Yeah. Uh, let's introduce ourselves. Owen, go first. Hey, everybody. I'm going to talk to the microphone here. Hey, my name's Owen. Um, Hi, I like, Owen. I like this podcast and tech and gadgets, and you can follow me on Twitter at TechnoOwen. I'm on there sometimes, more now than I used to ever be, which was zero before the podcast. So That's an improvement. Yeah, 100% improvement. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I'm Jaren, at Jaren. Uh, so, funny story about my Twitter handle. Somebody direct messaged me the other day. Again? This has uh, happened in the past. Yeah, it has. Um, and I'll, I'll read it verbatim because it's just kind of funny. Uh, Ooh, I, you can't say that word. Uh-huh. Jaron Lakes. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, Jaron Lakes direct messaged me and he said, Hey, man, I was wondering by chance if I could possibly have your username. <laughs> Just some random guy <laughs> yeah, wants. Just that ran- some random guy named Jaron. And I said, Sorry, I like it. And he said, Dang, worth a try. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> hey, can I have your username? I've Are never... you a company with money to back up that request? I'm holding no. out for Jaron Collins to want my username and pay me a lot of money. Who's Keep... that? He's Keep... a. NBA player Keep or was out. he? I don't, he might be retired now. I don't know because I don't follow basketball. But he was kind of famous, and his name was Jaron, like me. So well, he probably just uses at Jaron Collins. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to make that more ambiguous? Protect your privacy. I, I feel the same way. Yeah. What's the price limit on how much you would sell your Twitter handle for? Seventeen dollars. Seventeen dollars. Really? No. I would buy it for seventeen dollars. I would think really hard if it was a couple hundred. Really? I think really hard about it. I might turn it down still, but mm. a few thousand? Oh yeah, definitely. Every man has a price. Yep. Too bad United Airlines didn't think of that, right? Am I right? Oh, Am I... oh, oh. man, man, that was sad. I don't get it. Why don't you get it, Excitable James? Tell Hola, us about yourself. Hola, mi nombre es James Jensen. Uh, ni Twitter mm. de at JDD Jensen. Uh, that is very offensive. A la, really a la Xbox. Uh, hey, Tony, what's your, what's your username? <laughs> 
Let's let let's let James try again. You want to do over, buddy? I'm not very good at Spanish. You, you want to do over? I've been watching Spanish TV shows. I've been watching uh, more Narcos. Oh, so you've been watching English TV shows that have some Spanish in them. <laughs> I would you say, haven't been I watching would say like, it's like half Spanish. You haven't been watching like Univision or Telemundo or anything like that. No, see. Si. Okay. Bueno. No, yes. All no, right. no, no, see. Si. So, um, what's up? My name is James. You can find me here or every now and then on Geek Show Behind the Camera. <laughs> Or you can find me on Twitter at JDD Jensen, JDD is for ADD. Or you can find me on Xbox Live at Funeral Taters, that's Funeral Space Taters. Just a heads up, I have gone back to my abusive ex boyfriend, Destiny. What? As of recently, yes. Was I it the don't... trailer for Destiny 2 that it caused it? It was. This? It was the trailer for Destiny 2 that got me back into wanting to play the game. And my old raid friends have uh, asked me to come back and start playing with them. And actually, one of them bought the expansion for me. Uh, so it kind of pressured me a little Whoa. bit into... Yeah. Those are good friends. I know. Better it, than us. It got me into wanting yeah. to play it again, and then I started, and since last Thursday, I've probably put 20 hours back into that game. Wow. Well, Activision, you hear that? Your plan worked. Your awesome trailer got people playing your crappy first version of your game. <laughs> I don't understand the... Um, I don't know what the right word is. The, the Pancake. The, no, for Nathan Fillion, this this fan fall. He's a he's a cool guy, but it's like Nolan North. Like he's got a good voice, but like people go crazy. Like anything Nathan Fillion does, yeah. it, it just drives people. It's crazy. because of Firefly. He's got the mad geek cred, man. But why? Like Probably I watch Firefly. Firefly and I like it, but like I don't love it. I feel the exact same way. I mean, it's good. Yeah, it's like I don't crave another 20 seasons of it, But though. Breaking Bad was a million times better than Firefly. I get that it's a different TV show. That's but... super apples to oranges. Sorry, man. Both delicious <laughs> fruits. Both good fruits, but you can't really compare the two. If you were to compare Firefly, you got to keep it in like the space sci-fi genre. Name a better space sci-fi show. Andromeda. That's Star Trek The Next Generation. That... Battlestar Galactica. Okay, Battlestar. I'll give you that one. Not, not, not Next what? Gen, no. No, 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 no. That's a classic. It is classic, but it's not It's not better than Firefly Take or... Take that back. Or not even close to Battlestar Galactica. Battlestar Galactica. New Battlestar. Oh, yeah. Have you tried watching the old Battlestar no, Galactica? I won't do it. I won't. Uh, Tony, our host. Hey, I won't watch the old Battlestar Galactica, but it's I, bad. I will tell you my Twitter handle, at Quad T Tony. Uh, you can catch me here on the Gadget Spot or on the Geek Show podcast where I'm a producer and a panelist. And uh, that's about it Yeah, as I tried, far as that goes. I tried watching the old Battlestar Galactica just for the old set pieces and headdresses that they'd have, and I have a hard time even getting through the first episode. I don't know if it's because... I'm used to today's graphics, but like it looks like a Western well, family watered down version of Star Wars. It's kind of like trying to go back and watch old Doctor Who. You know, who can't if, do it? If you like current Doctor Who, I can't even watch current Doctor Who. I, I enjoy the current <laughs> Doctor Who, uh, but if you, you can't go back and watch the old ones because they are just so hokey, you know. Oh, I forgot to it's say, no um, on Mastodon, I am at Jaren at Mastodon.network. I saw that. Is that, yeah. uh, is, that a good, is that a good social network? I'm, I really, really like it. What are the benefits over Twitter or Facebook? Uh, well, nothing, unless yeah. you're following the <laughs> <Exactly>. same people. <laughs> but if, if you can get a good network to follow, Mastodon is really cool because it's decentralized. It's not owned by a company. It's kind of like email meets Twitter. And it's their unholy love child. I am also on Mastodon uh, at Quad T Tony dot was Mastodon Network dot com or something at Quad T Tony at Mastodon. Oh, at Quad T Tony at Mastodon. Network. Yeah, Mastodon dot Network. I'm on the same one as Jaren. Yeah, so it's it's a uh, really cool service. I, I would check it out. Is it Mastodon dot Social? That's a different. Yep. One. Well. well th- so the way it is is since, like Jaren said, it's decentralized, so you can get on any server you want. Like email. Like email. And then you can message to anyone you want on the Mastodon network. Like the overall kind of network idea of it. So actually, this the thing of... is, it's it's actually more complicated than Twitter. Because Twitter, you just have at and your name. And you can find anyone based on that. With Mastodon, you have to have at the name, at the server they're on. Unless you're on the same Unless server. Unless you're on the same server. Yeah. But the chances of you being on the same server as some random person are fairly slim. It's a really good idea. It's, it's really like old, cool. Old, I hope I hope it takes off. Old chat engines. And Similar, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it, it, it is pretty neat. Um, it would be cool to see it take off. Uh, they don't have it any way set up right now for it to ever make money, which makes me curious on how it would ever stick around if it got big. Terrorism. 
That that's how it would stick around. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's where that's where it will find its use at. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, like Tony said, it kind of makes me sad that it's not just at username because yeah. if you got a cool one on Twitter, then you don't really feel that special anymore because there's many instances Ooh. on Mastodon, so there could be multiple at Jaren's. Oh, yep. I was going to go try and get at Owen. You can still get at Owen. Just at, choose it. At, at Mastodon.network. I, I want at Owen globally, so I'm going to have to go to every mm-hmm. server and do yeah, it. Yeah, you would. Yep. Can, can I I'll... get james at james.com? If you open if... up your own instance of Mastodon, you could. Ooh. Yeah. Just got to host it. Every time I hear Lame. instance, I think of a Magic the Gathering. Hmm. <clears throat> Actually, this kind of springboards into my fir- into my story of what I got. Let's hear it. Well, All right, what you got? Is it Patreon time? Oh, actually, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, we got it. We got to take care of our tech daddies and tech mommies. We we might have a tech mommy. Is that our? Is that it's, what we're calling them? It's tech mama. Tech mama. Because I like tech like, mommy. It's like sugar daddy, sugar uh, mama. Oh, okay. Tech daddy, tech mama. I I I apologize tech, if I offended somebody out there. Tech mommy. No, that's wrong. <laughs> Mommy. Mama. You say it however you want, but no, you're wrong. <laughs> All right. What, uh, Jaron, what is Patreon? Patreon is a way for you listeners to help support the show. Uh, you can donate any amount you want or not donate at all, and we'll still love you and we'll still care for you and we'll still want your listenership. But, uh, yeah, donate if you want to. And uh, if you do donate, you get access to special content that we put out. Each Owen, month. like what content? Hey, uh, last time we did uh, some fun videos, right? We uh, we, we do fun videos every month. Fun videos. Uh, we do. Sometimes we're gonna do some games. Would we do? We did a. Yeah, we're gonna do a let's play this time. Yeah, we did a we did a shotgun challenge for Mountain Dew, which is not impressive if you. I've never seen Jaron throw up that much. But before. it was good. It was very good to see him. And he seen me throw up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, extra video content. It's kind of fun. I mean, we love you either way. And but yeah, if you're in our, is it the top tier or is it go out to everybody? On it's the top two tiers. You get okay. recognized for uh, right. donating towards the show, and just know that we really, really appreciate it. Even though it is not mandatory, uh, if you would like to do it, it's uh, Patreon.com forward slash the gadgets gadget spot just gadget sorry spot. i always get mixed up but uh, yeah forward slash gadget spot uh or you can go to our facebook page and i believe it is at the top that just says donate and we also need to announce our show's twitter handle right yeah we got a twitter yeah. on the show. Yeah. that's right so it's at real gadget spot yeah but thank you so much to AJ Jasper. Thank you so so much thank you Aaron Harris thank you uh thank you David Osuna Thank you, Roger Allen. Thank you, Jeffrey K- K- Cali. C A L E. Cali. Kale. Calais. 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 I'm going to say Kai. Kale. Just or Jeffrey if it's Kale. French, it could be Kai. Could be Calais, though. Thank okay. you so, so much, Jeffrey. Uh, thank you, Dan Clark and Connor Ritchie. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Adam Hecht. David Braschinski. <clears throat> thank you, Brian Lee. Braschinski. Braschinski. Is that it? It looks like it's Braschinski. Hey, I'm here all night. Thank you, Brian Lee. Thank you, Matt Nelson. Thank you, Valentine. Uh, thank you, Austin Beauregard. And thank you, Conrad Southworth. Even though you guys don't have to do this, just know we very, very much appreciate it. All this helps to going uh, to spread the love for the show and to pay for networking services what and happened, keep the lights on. What happened to Eileen Dover? That was the tech mama. Yeah. yeah. Is she gone? Is she oh, gone? Or was man. it a joke? Did you just make a joke? No, no I that's what it really was. Eileen, yeah. if, Eileen, if, you go yeah, look, right. if you go look in our email history, it says we had Eileen a new backer Dover. Uh, from Patreon. That it was Eileen Dover. Dover. Well, it's definitely a Bart Simpson to Mo type of joke, though. Yeah, it was. I think I questioned it at first, but she donate, donated. So, if you guys want to donate to the show and just make up names, that's that's fine too. I'll read them. I don't care. <laughs> Don't test me. I will. <laughs> Anywho, the story that I wanted to talk about was kind of uh, going off of uh, the Mastodon, what you guys were talking about. Do we have email? Oh. Or are we going to do an f- email in uh, a... I uh, only have... We have one email uh, that we got in, uh, one of the corrections from when we were talking about uh, oh, yeah. net let's, neutrality. Let's hit on that real quick. Sorry, James. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. For, it's fine. For so, real. But we are going to talk about this real quick. So, yeah, we did We did have some corrections, obviously, because uh, at first we said that we were against net neutrality. But we are for. We are for net neutrality. Net neutrality, <laughs> despite what Tony said over and over. Um, also, uh, Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, all the way. Yeah. Yes. That as well. Tony was against initially, oh. but 
My brain has since changed his tune. Uh, anyway, so we did have one, and it was a. It's kind of a cool thing. Uh, it's kind of scary, but with net neutrality being gone, if that happens, um, one of our one of our listeners emailed in and said that well, what about when the so right now we talked about VP, we talked about getting a VPN right and how we can encrypt our traffic, and uh, one of the things that he talked about what he what he mentioned was what about when the what about when net neutrality is finally so far gone that internet service providers will require you to install a certificate on your computer that allows them to do man in the middle attacks and basically unencrypt any encrypted traffic coming into your computer and they will literally and that that actually is not an not an unheard of thing and it it is a real possibility with the way things are going um they could require that i mean it's their network they own it right so so as of right now if you're on a website and in the upper left hand corner it says https and is green your internet service provider can't decode the packets yep because it is uh, encrypted for http secure they can still see where you're going they can though, still right? see every website you go to dns entries yeah yeah but they won't be able to see uh, what it is you're looking at on the website as far as the the packets of information that go back and forth so you know what i've been seeing online too uh, i forget exactly what it's called but it's called like uh Pornography. Like, no. <laughs> it's like almost flack for uh, internet uh, browsing. So what it does is while you're searching on like Amazon or something like that, it does uh, like searches in the background of uh, like actual things that you could be looking for. But it kind of makes it so like if the, uh, you know, your internet service provider is trying to track you, it uh, kind of, you know, it puts flack out puts there. Puts white noise out there yeah. for, for the search engines. I forget what that's called. I should, yeah. I should do more research I w- on that. I would do that, but what a waste of processor just to, like, yeah. hide my search yeah. results. Why don't they just not? I agree. Why don't they just not collect my data unless I say so? Oh, Money. that's silly. Yeah. Oh, you know, I know. I mean, <laughs> Money. That's, so funny. that's what I want. So anyway. why, why don't you just ask them to give you thousands of dollars while you're at it? Egg on your face. Yeah, maybe I'll make a GoFundMe for that. <laughs> you know. Indeed. So you can share your internet goodness. Millennial style. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, I had to clean all the NOS sprinkles off my phone. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah. I've done it before as well uh, to see what the NOS next sprinkles? Ta- what are you talking about? When you pour a soda, it fizzes, and all the all the little fizz dots fall on fizz dots. <laughs> everything around the phone. NOS sprinkles, fizz dots? What are we talking about? <laughs> I, I'm pretty clear about this. This is, this is very obvious. And so sometimes... You sprinkle it on devices that you touch, and you feel the crustiness. Yeah. That's from your soda. It's just haptic feedback. What are you talking about? Yeah, Right. It's Braille. (laughs) Braille. (laughs) My soda swore at me. Touch touch screen Braille. Okay. Uh... I, I got a little sidetracked. Did we hit on what you <laughs> no, wanted to talk J- about, James? James? James, we interrupted him twice. I say we let him. Okay. I don't want to do it anymore. No, James, All come right. on. Next no, he topic. already talked about it. All right. So what we were kind of... Wait, what? I thought you already did. No. no well, we've been really? About, we've been no. talking about net neutrality. Oh. And, uh, and, and, how, and also how ISPs can sell your data. My thing is really small, guys. Here we go. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> it's, That's why it's your wife so doesn't... small. Never mind. <laughs> I guess tell us about your thing. Yeah. And how yeah. small it is. Look, I've already, I'm prepared. Just get it over with. Just show me or say, or talk about it or whatever. No, no show. Just tell. <laughs> just, just, just. <laughs> whatever your small thing is, we're okay you, with you it. You show James. us yours, we'll show you ours. I won't. If you're looking for inspiration, go to thebeginnings.xyz and it shows you where a lot of the uh, internet bohemoths come from. Bohemoths? <laughs> What's a bohemoth? Behemoth. Oh, behemoth. Okay. Oh, there we like go. Like a behemoth? So, like, it puts a timeline to, like, Facebook and <laughs> oh. Instagram. And Tells you what the sites looked like when they first started kind yeah. of a thing? Oh, so this is for, like, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to say, looking, I'm not an idiot for starting my own business, and here's why. If you're looking for inspiration. It's you go good, there. It's a good website. Huh. And you can yeah. say, wow, literally hundreds of thousands of people failed, but these three big guys have made it. Yeah. I see six right now. Six, yeah, six seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten. So the odds are in your favor. Ten out of um, everyone else. It's really cool. I did read on a side note that relates to this. Uh, purple mattress. Yeah, is quickly becoming one of the next inter- internet unicorns. It's a with, mat- mattress with, in a bag with its online sale. I got one. Sales. Jaron got one yeah. a couple weeks ago. I did. How is it? Uh, it's pretty cool. I just don't understand how a vacuum packed. I mean, they're just all they did was use a vacuum packed bag. 
and put a foam mattress in there. No, that's not what it's about. That oh. doesn't matter because all the Tempur-Pedic stuff you buy is is packaged like that. So um, it's, what, it's, what it's, makes it's got purple the... what makes purple different on the internet side of it is it's direct to consumer oh. sales online. There. Yeah. And if you order in Utah, your shipment will ship in like two days because they're based here. But it's a good mattress for a good price, and we like it. Cool. All right, moving along. We are not sponsored by them. No. Nope. Uh, Okay, real quick. Nintendo, what are you doing to us? Why? Why have they done this? What are you doing to us? The Nintendo Classic Mini. They don't like continued already. They don't like money. They, That's they what it is. Want, they don't want my money. And I'm not paying I, the scalper. I'm nope. not paying 250 bucks nope. for 30 See, NES games. Nintendo, nope. they don't care about money. It, it really seems that they way. They care about like public perception, hype. social and popularity. Hype. I think so. It's crazy to me. So they discontinued it for no reason. Um, maybe they'll bring it back with other games uh, in the future. Maybe well, people pissed them off by breaking into it and side loading. I'm sure that was. And a factor, they were based. They were like, it would piss them were... off so much to say, "Oh, I don't want your money anymore." Well, yeah, because basically they were turning it into every game instead of sixty games or whatever. Thirty. Thirty. It was all games. Here's what I think they're gonna do, and this is all well, speculation. You could already do that on the computer anyway. I think they're gonna. Yeah, release but a... they didn't do it to themselves. I think they're gonna release another version of it. That's a Super Nintendo. And I has hope 30 so. Super Nintendo games. Oh, that's what they'll do. They'll and I think they're going to iterate all, it. They'll or iterate they can finally put Virtual Console on the Switch. Well, Hopefully they'll get around to that. Mm. I can't say finally. It's only been out for a month. But. Finally. <laughs> it would be nice, however, if they did that. So, I don't know. There's supposed to be one more shipment of, of NES Classic Minis coming out to stores this week. And after that... It is dried up. You could yep. probably Nothing. make a cool few hundred dollars if you. So as one up. soon as soon as that uh, uh, announcement came out, the cost of the uh, current ones online, scalper wise, eBay, Amazon Marketplace, whatnot, doubled or tripled in price. Yeah. Just because of the announcement. Yep. So now, what when they were about one hundred fifty bucks, which retail is fifty nine ninety nine if you can find one on the store, scalpers. For a while, we're between one thirty and one seventy. Now yep. they're all over two fifty. You'll get three hundred easy in a bidding war on eBay. It's crazy for collectors at this point. So anyway, go pick one up if you can and find then, one, and then let us know where you got it. Yeah. Anyway. Why? So what mad. are they? I think Just you're right there. I, th- I think they do it, like Jaron said. I think they do it for the public hype. For the for well, the. I mean, it's got to be because the cost to build that machine was probably. Oh, I don't know. R and D on it was fifty bucks. Not, <laughs> and, yeah, totally. And then uh, the actual manufacturing, manufacturing cost. Hey, is uh, maybe Jim, like, find the cheapest processor you can yeah, out there. Exactly. Hey, probably walk by and they're like, "Did you make that? Let's sell it." It's probably like an old manufacturing you know, yeah. was like ten dollars a unit. Let's put that Raspberry Pi in t- inside of a Nintendo Jeez. branded uh, gray plastic. And I want one so bad. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they got your number. We're still. I'm still working on the retro pie. I've got a few more things to buy for it, but we uh, we have that. <laughs> We've been teasing really? that. Yeah, <laughs> we've been teasing that for well, like a year well, now. Well, that's the problem is that I, I haven't had the I haven't had the money to go get the uh, the. Why don't Bluetooth you just tell receiver. me? I'll just get it for you. Well, it's, I don't know. What, it, what, what what do you need? We need we need some parts. I have a parts list to get it going. I'll send it to you. Anyway, couldn't couldn't you just emulate it right out the box? No, you didn't buy the kit. You when you yeah, when that's you right, impu- James. When you, imp- you didn't buy the kit when you oh, impulsively <laughs> when you impulsively bought the Raspberry Pi. You just bought the board, uh-huh. and then you very cleverly, I might add, three D <laughs> printed a Nintendo sixty four case, which is pretty clever. Okay, but what uh, am I missing? A uh, Bluetooth adapter for the controllers. What if I have a USB controller? You could do that. For sure. Who wants to have a wire? But I have. But I have. I that's have like an a old. Baby's toy. I have an old. Yeah, that's what uh, Apple said about the iPhone seven. Well, I have an old PS3. They were wrong. So I have an old PS3 <laughs> controller that we're going to use. I, I went and reviewed a ton of which which uh, Bluetooth controllers work the best for the re- RetroPie, and the Xbox 3 or the uh, PlayStation 3 or 4 came out to be the I wonder if the Switch Pro the controller best. would work okay on it. Yeah, I don't supposedly, know. Supposedly. Supposedly it's already compatible with PC and whatnot. So, Can but I, anyway... We got, some, we got some parts, but but uh, I've got all the I've got all the overclocking information. I got some heat sinks I I bought and glued on there because you have to do that in order. To, you have to overclock. Well, I don't I don't want you to pay for everything and then it's give right. it to me. No, I don't. I he's I'm, not going to give it to you. He's, he's keeping it for himself. I get it back. <laughs> gonna, oh. I'll, I'll bring it in. It's, it's wait a, a minute. He'll bring <laughs> it in. And let you see it. I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back. 
<laughs> with a price tag? <laughs> James, let's not worry about it. Anyway, next topic, Tony. We'll, deal next, about the, the, next, we'll talk about this off air. Yeah, I, guess, I don't want, so. I don't want to talk You about got it. screwed. What happened? <laughs> don't worry about it. Possession. Nine you said everything of, was going to be okay. Nine tenths of the law. Nine tenths of the law. 30 days. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, another Nintendo. Um, screwed. Another Nintendo story here. Uh, Nintendo has sold more copies of the Switch version of Breath of the Wild than they have Switches. They have an what? attach. They have an attach rate of over one hundred percent. This has never happened before. It is unprecedented. It's the scalpers, right? This is the people nope. reselling the game. A doubtful. Right. It is probably. Um, I mean, I guess that could be a factor, yeah. but most people are thinking that if you see it on the shelf and you know you're getting a Switch anyway, they buy it without having a Switch. I, I know. I have I know. a friend who uh, who listened to the show. In fact. He bought Zelda, but he doesn't have yeah. a Switch yet. See, that's... Same here. I know two people where I work that did the same thing. Yeah, and yeah. then the other factor too that I read online, people are speculating, is uh, you have people that buy the uh, like Ultimate Collector Edition, yeah. and never open it, and then they buy a regular one. To I play. don't believe that. Maybe ten people did that. At least ten, like twelve. <laughs> okay, <laughs> crazy uh, people. But I think it's mostly people, like we said earlier, that uh, know they're going to get it, but buy it before they buy I'm a Switch. I'm fifty hours into that game. I've beat. Half of the Divine Beasts. So two? Yes, two. <laughs> You're going to make James get up and leave. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm dead at this point. It I'm doesn't s- matter. I'm still liking the game. It's great. It still surprises me in I certain have, ways. I have a, uh, a week-long trip coming up that uh, I haven't... I've purposefully not played Zelda that much, as much as I normally would, because I'm going to take it with me on my trip and play it on the plane and whatnot. So I'm excited to dive into that again. But uh, great game. So good. It sells more than... Than the, than the systems that it's played on. They didn't even need to put out the Switch. Just put out the, the game. <laughs> Just put out the cartridge by yeah, itself. that's it. People get it for the taste factor. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that tastes <laughs> so bad. And then Amiibo hacking along with that? What's, what's the deal with that? So this is actually really cool, and I'm very interested in it, because I have two Amiibos so far in my collection. Two. Two Amiibos. I like hacking, so... What were they, $20 and, uh, a piece? No, so uh, one, one is the... Uh, uh, wolf Link Wolf that came with Twilight Princess, and you pack-in. suggest buying that one for Breath of the Wild, right? Yeah, because that one unlocks a uh, a dog companion that will go fight things for you and find items and stuff like so, that. So, uh, hey, I'm not done. Uh, Welcome but, to my uh, world. I'm not done. It's yeah. this one, right? Yeah, that one. It's thirty three dollars. Yep, mine was. I got it as a free pack in because I bought Twilight. Princess. What's the point of Amiibos? You pay money for a extra, cheat, extra content. Extra it's, it's not extra content, it's a cheat. It's uh it's extra usually content. a cheat. Um, in Zelda, it's not really cheat, it's extra items. But uh, in most that games, just appear out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. In most <laughs> games, it's uh cosmetic stuff. You know, different suits, things like that. Um this is their version of DLC. Kind of, yeah. I but mean, not well, to a lesser extent. Minus the D. But you also get the cool physical figure. And if you I'll ever played, you if, if, if you ever played with a held an amiibo, they're actually constructed pretty well. They're 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 fun little action figures. As far so as people that want to collect toys, yeah, they're collectibles. I mean, yeah, I think about it. Nintendo is a very, very, very Japanese traditional company, and you go to Japan, and there are. Millions and millions of vending machines around that have these little collectible figurines in them that everyone collects over there. This is just another take on that. Um, but with this Amiibo hacking, it uses an NFC f- uh, chip to communicate with your Switch or your 3DS or your Wii U. And so someone has figured out a way to spoof the NFC signal. I was wondering how long this was going to take. Yeah, so they spoof the NFC signal that's on an Amiibo and with these like blanks. Oh. They have these blanks you can buy. I guess the whole kit to do everything will, will run you about 50 bucks. But still, that saves over time. And, and uh, well, I mean, you there's certain Amiibos that are 50 bucks by themselves right. for for Zelda. But can you change them? Resell price or is it a... $50 or resell? Resell. Oh. Amiibos usually come out at uh, 12 dollars to, to nineteen ninety nine. Do they only put out a certain amount? It seems like it. They it, it's classic Nintendo. So they, no t- Nintendo. They they bring control out control the yeah, control the supply. Control the supply. They bring out a bunch and then and then it dries up just as fast as it was released. But anyway, so with this kit, you can actually spoof the NFC. Uh, That's cool. Signal from the amiibo and put it on these blanks, so you can just take this little blank disc and hold it. On the places there's where you put N- the amiibos, NFC chips. You NFC can just buy chips. a pack of them, or have yep, you buy a pack of them and they're oh, reusable. You can cool. reprogram them, and so you can download the NFC signal 
from uh I, I smell a thirty fifty. I don't know the website, but uh you I can think... download it, set it up, and have all the amiibos uh items in Zelda. See, I think I think this deserves to be some kind of phone app that will like that would work. NFC that would be blast really cool. Where you that just would be awesome. It. Yeah. I would get behind that. Yeah. This like a to game be... genie built into yeah, your phone. Exactly. Yeah, basically. Because, I mean, what phones don't have an FC, right? So then it, you, you end up in kind of a gray market, though, because you're not supposed to be able to get that stuff without buying the Amiibos. Right. You know, kind of like uh, emulators. Yeah. It would be... Emulators are kind of, they're a pretty gray area because if you own the cartridge, then okay, I guess. But if you don't own the cartridge, you should you have a digital version of the game yeah. anyway well nintendo just either needs to make it so that you don't have to buy something to enjoy the full content of the game uh that's not the problem i don't think i think that's a factor but i think the main problem is nintendo just needs to make more freaking amiibos they just need to put the konami they, code and in and make it NES unlock everything consoles. and nes classic minis yeah. what the heck and switches and switches well they're and finally Switch doing games. that but uh yeah so that's kind of neat um I don't know if I'm going to invest 50 bucks to try it out, but maybe it'll be a thrifty 50. It would be cool because then you could you could buy the amiibos, leave them in their package and still get the use out of them. Yeah. Because I'm I I just if if an action figure doesn't articulate, I don't like taking it out of its package. The Wait, NF- so the NFC doesn't communicate through the plastic? I haven't tried because but that'd be cool now with the so. Switch. With the Switch you could just take it to the store where all the amiibos are and just Oh, that's true. Go you through could. the plastic, you know? <laughs> well, you'd have to stand there while playing the game the whole time. I'll have to test it out because I have this Zelda amiibo right Does it, here. It has to, so it has to stay close to you. So I don't know. I don't know if there's enough. If there's too much space between. They probably put some sort of blocker. So. Oh. Oh, you so, know what? There. Uh, I think there might be. Uh, yeah. Look. So if you look down underneath there, you can see a wrap that's on the bottom of the platform. Uh, and it like looks a, like, like it has, a lead. It looks like it has a metalli- metallic, yeah. uh, reflective surface that's bouncing facing to sig- toward to bounce the signal away. NMC yeah. blocker. Yeah, sure. We'll call it that. No, it's legit. Oh, okay. Hmm. Anyway, that's. Is that is all our Nintendo a, talk? Is she holding a tablet? Nintendo? Yeah. Yeah, that's a. Uh, Have you not looked at anything about the game? No, that's a chic slate. That is. It's it's pretty cool. James really doesn't want to have it spoiled, so he is done. <laughs> so the Sheik Slate is basically Nothing. how you win the game. That's that's the winner right there. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you have that, which you get by doing this. Yeah. I've had a Wii and Zelda Breath of the Wild at my house for a couple weeks you now. You mean a Switch? Sure. And I still haven't played it. It's killing me. It's because it's not your birthday yet. It's not my birthday. On your birthday, you wake up and be like, it's my birthday. But uh, And you'll uh, rip it open. And then I'll have to go through all the downloads. Yep. A, ga- a game that does like to produce enough consoles, who seem- can't seem to sell enough, is Microsoft. Segway, uh, Segway, come on. Oh, I think I get what you're saying. Yeah. They they produce enough consoles, but don't sell enough consoles. Yes. Okay. Project Scorpio. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so man. that got revealed about... Uh, Two weeks ago, it week looks and a half. so cool. I just watched some of the videos, but I didn't. I didn't dig into it. It seems pretty cool, though. I've read every single bit of info I can find. Some on of it. the stuff is just fantastical. That I'm. I'm like, really. So uh, this general specs. Uh, PS, the original Xbox has like 1.2, 1.3 teraflops compute, yeah. compute power. Scorpio has six. That's so the that's P- a lot, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. PS4 Pro only has 4.2, so it's like leapfrogging the PS4 Pro. Um, but it, it'll have 12 gigs of GDDR5 memory. 12 that, gigs of RAM. That's rather than stuff. 8 of DDR3. So that's, that's the a, good stuff. Yeah, yeah, that is the good stuff. The trade off is they did get rid of the ES RAM that was in the Xbox One. But that's and a that's, positive thing if they're going to GDDR5. It's definitely a positive thing, but it did, I think, make it a little bit harder for them to uh, do full Wonder if be compatibility. Optane ready. What with if, the no, there's no opt-in in there. First of all, it's an AMD chip in there. Oh, right. Well, it sounds like Jer- they're solving Jer- the. All right. <laughs> it sounds like they're solving the compatibility issues. They with did. Software. They did. They did. So yeah. no worries there. But it it was it was an engineering hurdle that they had to overcome. So the uh, the CPU is 31 percent faster than the original Xbox One, um, and uh, they upped the GPUs to 100 1,172 megahertz from like eight. 47 or From something? 853. Yeah. 853. This thing's yeah. a major, a major jump. But the coolest thing is they're saying that any games running at 900p and 1080p will be able to do full 4K. 
Um, and that's because they're doing a lot of DirectX optimization, like right to the hardware. It's insane, uh, everything I've read about this system, because uh, it's the first time in, in console history that a console manufacturer has looked at the software out there and said, okay, we need to build a device that will run this software absolutely the best that it can. And so you're you're ending up with a, the Xbox Scorpio, which is a six teraflop compute on the GPU, but it's probably going to punch up in the range of like a nine teraflop. This is my own estimation, eight to nine teraflop uh, GPU because of the intense software optimizations they've baked right into the hardware. It's crazy. So they were showing Forza 6 running at native 4K, 60 frames per second, and that's a really good-looking game. Um, and they still had about 30 to 40% headroom, headroom left on the GPU. Yeah. That's good. Now, that is that is possibly an outlier at this moment because, well, it's obviously not possibly, because uh, the Forza engine has been very well optimized for Xbox console architecture. It's a first-party developer. But the fact that they're they still able, had that much headroom left, that, that's they're crazy. able to do that with that much headroom. So, so Microsoft went through and they and they got with every developer of common game engines. So you have their first party stuff with uh, they do with uh, Unreal on the Gears, uh, Gears of War stuff. You have the Forza engine, you have uh, Frostbite, um, and there's also I I believe they worked also with uh, the Crytek guys for the Cry engine because that's a multi platform engine. And uh, they've gone through and done everything they can to make it so these game engines don't have to have as many draw calls to the CPU from the GPU. So you you save overhead on that. They've gone through and optimized the RAM to to better utilize for streaming high resolution like uh, 4K textures. And it, it, it I'm really excited. It's about it. crazy. They, so, there's, they're oh. still going to put a 4K Blu-ray drive in there yep. uh, from the rumors. It, it has a vapor chamber cooling so that's unit a, inside. That's a that's a type of cooling that uh, NVIDIA has had on uh, the latest generation uh, GPUs, the 10 series. And it basically is about 30% more efficient at cooling uh, chips than a regular. So they basically PC. went to the architect guys and said, if you could build any machine... With no, with price not being an issue, what would you put in there? Kind of. It feels like they did that, but they also went at the same time to the software developers and said, right. what can we do hardware-wise, bake in functionality that will make things easy for you? They, they've they they've taken the, the, the Scorpio dev kits around and uh, talking to software developers, they can usually get stuff ported from the Xbox One dev kit to the Xbox Scorpio dev kit in two days or less wow. and have it running good. And that's not even with optimizations, it's running good. So it's it's crazy. It's one of those things where at this point it's like the sky the sky's almost the limit with the way Microsoft is doing this. Do they have a price out for the uh, Scorpio? No, not they yet. don't. Uh, so three. They promise that it's going to be a premium console. So I'm betting eight hundred bucks for this. No, no way. most 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 uh, analysts and uh, game people are saying they they're betting it's going to be between five and six hundred bucks. Yeah. What was the PS? Uh, PS4 when it first came out, three ninety nine, four hundred, and PS4 Pro is still four hundred, but I I don't think they could price it too high because from the consumer, from the for the average consumer when when they see PS4 Pro and Project Scorpio, they're going to be like, what's the difference? Oh, this one's a lot cheaper. Yeah, yeah so they well, have if they go higher than I think if they go higher than five fifty, they're done. Yeah, because didn't they, they, they be didn't they enough. learn their lesson with the next gen ones, the three sixty and the PlayStation three? That there's a limit on what people will pay for a console. Oh, they yeah, learned I mean, that on the Xbox One. Yeah, it was yeah. five hundred when it came yeah, out. Right. So uh, if they if they keep it at five hundred or less, I think they'll have a really good chance of taking back a lot of market share. I from, think I think it'll be five hundred max. Yeah. I see, and that's and I'm I'm I've been waiting for this console uh, since I heard about it in E3 last year, right? Yeah, and. Uh, because it's first of all, it's going to have the Halo, the next Halo oh, yeah. game on it, which I'm super excited about. But also, I just it's that's kind of my my limit is that five hundred dollar cap. So if they kind of go over that, I'm going to spend more. Make you think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll make you think twice before you yeah. give the, your money to two times exactly to the store teller. Well, it's kind of an optional um, console, isn't it? Right. Because and all it, the games that are going to come out are exactly. going to be compatible with Xbox One. I was about to say that uh, Microsoft has guaranteed <laughs> that anything that comes out for one of the systems, Xbox One or Scorpio, will work on the other. That's pretty fantastic. So I was going to say almost anything over 300 I'm out. 
Yeah. Like, there's no point. You yeah, know, you say me. that now, but you'll see. The oh graphics. yeah, no, I'll, I'll you'll see the graphics. That. You'll be like, I want one. I just, well, and I have a 4K so, TV. And, yeah, you know. th- this is a 4K TV seller right here. Yeah. If you have a 4K TV, you need to get this, yeah. and, and vice see, versa. That's, and we're well, that's that's our plan. We're in my family. We're going to be upgrading our TV this year, this yep. next this next year or two, and so that's we're going to be moving to a 4K TV. Me so. too. 4K with HDR. Oh man, it's good. So uh, the other, what was the? Oh yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about the RAM. So since they're going from 8 gigs to 12 gigs, uh, what they're doing now is they're dedicating 8 gigs solely to gaming performance, whereas before they had about 5, 5.5, usually. It's so closer the, to 5 all the time. So, so, the, so the system's getting another gig as well, then. So, uh, your math's wrong. The system's getting 4 gigs. Exactly. Oh, another Bef- gig compared yeah. to before. Yeah, yep. yeah. So the system itself will have 4 gigabytes of RAM to run on all the time for background processes, things like that which is more than any system's ever seen. Why would you need that in the background? Yeah, they, uh, they took away the multitasking, so I wonder why they do need it. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be helpful for things like... Um, downloading games in the background? Downloading games in the background. Also, Microsoft's answer to Twitch, which is Beam. Right. And uh, Beam is supposedly going to run 4K60 while you play without any impact to performance. So you'll be able to record your gameplay sessions at 4K, 4K wow. 60 frames per second. And it will not impact the game you're actually. They playing. They talk about the size that they're putting in there for hard drive. They didn't mention. Storage. They didn't mention Ooh. storage size. Dang. But yeah, I have an external drive, so I mean, who really cares now, right? As long as it works. Sixty-five I mean, I don't think, gigabytes. I don't, th- I don't think they would take that away, but um, I think to stay in par with whatever else, they'd have to put some sort of solid state device in there. To they made a point of saying that they're going to be able to stream assets faster than ever from the hard drive in there to right. the game itself on the Scorpio. So it makes you wonder what kind of connection are they going to use? Because they use, a, I believe they use a so well, you know, I think they use a SATA two in the Xbox One, not a SATA three. Really? Yeah, I know really? PS PS four for sure was SATA two, and uh, wasn't it or was it SATA three? I don't remember. What is that? Uh, SATA 2 is slow. SATA 3 is faster. For is the, it a processor? No, it's, it's the it's data the, connection. It's from... the connection from your hard drive to your motherboard. Yeah. Oh, so it's a USB cord. <laughs> For inside, yes. USB, if you can compare the two, but one's called USB and one's called SATA. More SATA. They're, and they're different. Uh, Serial they're APA. They're different. Yeah, so... James looks blank inside. <laughs> you guys so, got me in a weird funk ever since you started talking about snakes when you first started. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll just throw that hey, out there right I gotta now. Say, that was not me. That was that was awful. That, that was Owen. That was, I hate so, so much about the I'm things sorry. that you chose to be there. Don't look under your chair then. <laughs> Whatever I'm I'm not kidding. Don't look under your chair. <laughs> because I didn't know you were gonna be so vehement about it and just don't. Don't do it. And he's no, gone. Don't t- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jokes, James. I would never do he that. He left the room. He left. He, he oh, d- I just turned his chair over. It's okay. Yeah, there's actually nothing. The monster is gone now, it's James. It's gone, James. I'm sorry. That was, that was, that was uh, low-hanging fruit and, and <laughs> poor You've taste. You've been demoted from the nice That's one. That's poor taste. I can't Ooh, believe, I can't believe, it's I can't Karen believe that he reacts more poorly. More, 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 more poorly. Take more, that, James. More gooder. <laughs> he reacts more less gooder, gooder. Less gooder to a snake joke than it, uh, orphan or adopted. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I almost welcome those jokes. You got to laugh to keep from crying sometimes. <laughs> That's you should just just translate that over to snakes Shh. like that. Like uh, I mean, no. I think oh, that I hate snakes. Jared Jared almost <laughs> ruined the whole uh, the whole get spot get together the other day by by showing a picture of a snake on. Uh, on the, on That's the, true. You yeah. went straight to the sink. Can we stopped like talking were, about snakes. You were maybe gonna barf. <laughs> I'm down for talking about anything else. <laughs> All right, so the point about the Scorpio stuff is uh, it we'll, looks awesome. It looks it looks really really promising, and we'll see more about it at E3 in June. It looks better than what the previous rumors were, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, and and honestly, to me, it looks better than the difference between the 360 and the Xbox One, which isn't quite right because the Xbox One was roughly ten times more powerful than the P, than the 360. But I don't know. For some you'll have reason, the gaming catalog though for this. That's one, the thing is you'll have perfect backwards compatibility. It's also going to support all the 360 backwards compatibility they've done 
for and they the said Xbox that the One Xbox 360 games will also see a performance boost. Yeah. Which, which have you guys played any of the Xbox 360 backwards compatible games yet? I've played a few of them. Yeah. What, what are your guys' go to Xbox 360 backwards compatibility ge- compatible games? Oh, I didn't play for more than ten minutes. No. Nope. Really? Yeah. I just I, wanted to see if it worked. I still want to get Portal Two, so I'll probably do that sometime. That's what I've been playing is Portal Two, Fable Two. They're good. I was playing um, Perfect Dark Zero. That was like a launch title for the Xbox 360. I've been playing Ratchet played, or uh, played okay. Banjo Kazooie. Get geared up for uh, ukulele. Ukulele on the Switch. Yeah, that's going to be released sometime in 2017. Sometime this year. <laughs> I'll just play it while I'm waiting in line for the new Star Wars movie. Oh, Which, by man. the way, how good does that trailer look? So good. Yeah. Speaking of Star Wars, Battlefront. I am so excited for that. Battlefront. So excited. Battlefront Two. I mean. Sorry. You, are you stopping me from talking about Star Wars? Yeah, I don't understand that. This is this is really weird because uh, aren't hey you guys, all about the Star remember, Wars? Just remember, no pre-orders. Absolutely, no pre-orders. I no. say that for every game. James, I agree. no pre-orders. You're going to pre-order. Of course, that, I'm going to pre-order that. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing: you get extra heroes if you there's pre-order a, it. There's a couple of things that I want. <laughs> One, never, never pre-order a game for digital content. The only time I say it's okay to pre-order a game, in my opinion, and I think this is shared by most people, is if it comes with a physical collectible that you can't get otherwise. Or, or if it's cheaper, like on Amazon. Or if it's eh, Nintendo. I guess so. Okay, for Star Wars Battlefront 2, there's a couple of musts. It has to cover all the eras, which it sounds like it's going to. It is. Um, it has to have NPCs in it. Why would it not have NPCs? Because the Wait, last you, one you, didn't have NPCs. What's in your definition of NPC? Well, do you did you ever play the first Star Wars Battlefront, like the first and second one? Just a little bit. Where it's like you capture the points and then NPCs spawn from the points. Oh, you, you want have to NPCs in multiplayer? Yep. Oh, um, that's I what see. I want. Okay. Yeah, I'm I not want, so sure about that one. I want like that Titan, Titanfall style. Yes, I want the original. I want yeah, Titanfall style. I want the original uh, gameplay back where it is you capture the points and people spawn from the points. Uh, I want no longer. I don't. I don't want these collecting token bullcrap. I don't want that. I want if I see a if I see an ATAT right there, I want to run up and go inside of it. <laughs> if I see, you know, what, what's well, they, what's funny about that? They are getting rid of the tokens for the heroes. You have to earn the heroes, kind of like earning a titan. Oh, I don't want I that just either. See, like you're on a battlefield shooting things. Hey, is that an ATAT laying down low enough for me I'm to climb go into jump right into now? I'll just kind of shimmy up there I'll right now. I'll just climb right oh, up there and okay. get in the ATAT. I'm going to run around the battlefield and I'm going to find a token to get me inside of an ATAT. <laughs> and then I'm going to find a Wampa and go swamp them. I didn't say the previous <laughs> version was any better. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> You're going to make fun least, of me. <laughs> at least one of them has a theatrical background in truth. I mean, True. he yeah. did, uh, you know. Right? Yeah, they use tokens all the time in Star Wars. No, that's wrong. <laughs> this one though, that backfired unlike... tragically. <laughs> what happened, Owen? Uh, no, it used to be so nice. I to was me. on your <laughs> side there against tokens for running up. Even and when you're on my in. side, it seems like you're not. On Isn't my that side what anymore. Luke did? I'm actually with he James did. on this he one. Jumped, yeah. He jumped yeah. up. He sucked and cup to the ATAT. So I thought I want to be able to go into I, Bespin and get power converters. Well, I know. kind of thought in before the first one came out, I thought that was something you'd be able to do, like what Luke did in Empire, yeah, right? Where he climbs. Up, just like James was saying, cuts into it and then takes the guy out inside. Or does he just throw a grenade? He I just don't know. It just, grenade, that just he? doesn't seem realistic to me. But so, like, what you're saying right now just doesn't register. Either way, it would be really cool, especially if you could hijack an ad. Yeah, that would be. Very so, if you could cool. hijack, an how cool ad-app? would it be if you could actually go inside and like fight inside the ad? That's what I just said. That's I know. Cool. I'm yeah, agreeing with. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't understand there, what this whole conversation is sideways to me. I don't understand what you're talking <laughs> about. I smell toast. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I'm having a strike. So we yeah. don't know if that's actually going to be in Battlefront 2, but it would be cool if it was. It does have a single-player campaign. See, okay, now that's what I'm actually that. excited for. Um, and that was one of the main reasons I never really got into Battlefront 1 was because I wanted a single-player campaign. But, and it will be Star Wars canon, they say. Yeah, it'll be canon, and and it is written by the same guy that wrote Spec Ops The Line. Did you, any of you guys play Spec Ops The Line? I played uh, Ogre Battle 64. Yeah, that's not it. Um, Spec Ops The Line is a fantastic uh, third-person shooter that takes place in, in kind of slightly... Oh, Star slightly, Wars Republic Commando. No, that's not it either. Uh, slightly future... Um, what's the big city... Uh, back east, Bespin, or not back east, but on the in New the York middle, City, in the Middle East, Crota, uh, the Knights of Ren, Super, Mecca, super tall building, 
Dubai. 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 Burj Khalifa. Yeah. <laughs> Burj Khalifa. I think it. I think it took place in Dubai or a city that was modeled after Dubai. Anyway, the story it's in pronounced Dubai. The story in Spec Ops: The Line is really, really, really good. So if you haven't played that, give it a shot. Wait, you wait. Could, you How could, good is it? Really, really, really good. Uh, you could probably find it used or on sale for like five bucks on 360 or computer or PS3. But is it what? what when is it going to? Because you said it's canon. So and the so the, the happens, preview happens shows, right after Return of the Jedi. Yeah, yeah, where they they call down like what is it the stormtrooper special forces or something like yeah. that? And they're and, just kicking butt in the forest, and they see the Death Star two get destroyed. They're like, we got to avenge our emperor. So if it's written by the same guy that did Spec Ops and he takes Star Wars stuff like that into account, it's going to be really Which, good. Did you ever read Star Wars Aftermath, the the canon book that takes no, place? No, there's right three after? of those. There's three of those. I have yeah, not. I have them on my on my server to listen say, to. But say, say what you will about. I'm going to actually go through and listen to all the rest of them. But like, yeah. say what you will about the Empire. But like they say, I, I think it's like an aftermath. It's in like the first or second chapter. They're like ripping down the the emperor's big old statues, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden bombs start going off because like it, it goes into anarchy. And so like, right? At that, least that there was order. Sweet. I need to read that. It's uh, what that's called a power vacuum. Yeah. Once you remove a Dyson? whatever's yes, it's Dyson. <laughs> Once you remove whatever's in charge, something tries to fill it. Yeah. And it usually starts with anarchy. Yeah. So Af- Africa. Th- one of the developers of Battlefront 2, it, he said that there might not be any DLC, but then EA kind of corrected that, like, no, there will be DLC. E- EA's but, like, no, 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 <laughs> we whoa, are going to make you do some but DLC. Th- what did Kevin say? But uh, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a glimmer of hope they might go the Titanfall 2 route. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping so Come that on. they don't segment the player base. Well, because, it's not unprecedented because Titanfall 2 is published by EA. Yeah. So, I mean, it, they right. could. They made it. so much money off the DLC with Battlefront 1 that they don't need to charge for the DLC in Battlefront. Battlefront <laughs> 2. There you go. Yeah, I don't think so. But that would be that'd be great though, because that is one of the biggest problems with Battlefront One. I got all the DLC and there's hardly anyone playing it because Here's, no one bought it. Because you're behind a paywall. Yeah. Um if it were me, I would say no charge for multiplayer DLC, but if they want to add a uh, story based single player DLC, you could charge for that. I don't I, I don't I see agree. a problem with that. I agree with that. Yeah, and it wouldn't segment people. Exactly. It, it sounds like they're redoing the space combat as well. They're getting the people who did the X Wing VR mission to do it. Oh cool. Um uh, and that was an excellent, excellent uh bit of content there. I played it, it was really really fun. Uh but they're they're redoing a lot. I don't know if they're putting in the mode that you mentioned from the original battlefronts. I want the space battle back, man. Sounds where like you, gotta, you just like, want to play old battlefront. Why don't you just go play the old game? Because I want like as many NPCs as we have on uh, the system nowadays. I want like seventy-two people running around the battlefield, not like twelve. Mm. Which no, like don't they, be they had, like forty-eight. With yeah, the but like modes. back in the day, like that was a ton of people. Yeah. But like now, it's like meh, meh. Yeah. Eh. Then I want the occasional person to be in there too. Yeah. So I've been playing Destiny again. Um, Got back into that. Yeah. Oh, this, this sounds like we've already talked about Was that it. because of the uh, yeah. Destiny 2 trailer that came out? I feel like we already talked about that. Deja we vu! We sure did. Oh, we did? Yeah, yeah. that's the only yeah, reason Yeah, we, we definitely that. did. That's Anybody here smell um, toast? Nope. I did a minute ago. Let's take a minute and uh, uh, talk to Owen about his Thrifty 50 review. Oh, yeah, hey, that was uh, pretty fun. Did you guys What did you end up video? getting? I got the uh, the Wemo smart light switch. Oh, th- don't worry. I just edited the video. So yeah, <laughs> James edited the Why video. Why did you ask it then? It's a great video. Check it out. Yeah. Wemo even retweeted us. Yeah, they did. Uh, I actually got contacted by NetBeast as well. You guys ever heard of them? Oh no, not very many people have, as it turns out. But uh, they uh, they wanted me to they they had one of their PR guys tweet me directly and was like, "Hey, you have this. Why don't you try NetBeast? Uh, it's called Yeti." Anyway. And Yeti? Yeah, Yeti is oh, their cool. app. And uh, I'll get to that in a second. But so if you haven't watched the video yet, uh, go to the go to the uh the old Gadget Spot uh YouTube page and, and check that out. It's really it's a really good video. Um So what do you think of it? I shot like six videos trying to get the right things for James and then he was like, I just used the first take on everything, so I felt really <laughs> stupid. But uh I hey, so you did a good job, buddy. So here's I don't so the switch itself is pretty standard. It's I mean you you get to control the lights with your phone. It's a light switch. It's a light switch. It, and at the end of the day, that's that's what it is. Um, but I had some. There were some annoying things. I have a lot of three way switches. I live in a multi level home, so we have many floors up and down, whatever. Oh, 
Oh, lots of we lots get of, it. You live, you're oh, rich. Okay. No, no, just a lot I of have so many it's, floors. I have many Look floors. at me. No, no, no. I feel I like I cake. How many floors do you have? Ten. I, I feel like Eight. I walk into that. Fifteen floors. Okay, I don't. <laughs> this is not undeserved. But I, I think have we're, like nine kids. I think we're. And past, I'm too rich to get up off my couch and I flip the light meat. switch. Yeah, I'm too. I'm. It's hurting, but I feel like I walked in. I feel like I threw that one right across the plate. That was really harsh, you guys. I'm I joined. Still, I'm I joined in as well, but that was harsh. I put a tarp under my. I'm, I'm okay. Um, Owen, are you all right? Yeah. Okay. I'll, anyway, oh, I'm not adopted, and I'm rich. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm next to a doctor. Anyway, you could be describing yourself with that one though, too, Jaren. <laughs> I have. I can grow facial hair. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I have some switches. I wish house, I could do that. And I, and I, <laughs> <laughs> I play with my snake in the bathtub. <laughs> you hate snakes. I know. I do. Oh. See, if this were me, I'd be freaking out. That vein would just be appearing on oh, yeah. my I would just go quiet. <laughs> I tried to keep going. <laughs> uh, so, despite my richness, uh, I do have a multi-level, a small one, I might add. And uh, 4,200 is prob- not Oh, I could afford do. solar. That's, that is, that I couldn't afford to do solar. <laughs> Pro tip, don't do solar. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I did it for the rebates. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, the problem is we have a lot of three-way switches, meaning multiple <laughs> switches that will turn on lights from different rooms. Is that what it means? That's what that means. Cool. Yep, it's not a weird term, James. Like I can see on your face. This is how I normally look. Oh, okay. So <laughs> it, it doesn't is just that weird. It doesn't handle the three-way too well. It will not handle the three-way at all. They, well, they tell you know, you I had the exact same problem. I tried installing a motion sensor light in my house. Yeah. I thought you were going to say will you not couldn't work. handle a three-way either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I threw that one right across the I plate, know. too. Nobody, didn't take nobody it. swung. <laughs> I <Anyway>. could. <laughs> <laughs> and he has. If given the opportunity, but nothing has come up. <laughs> Stop looking at us like that. <laughs> All right, Owen. nothing will hey, James, come up. James, talk to me afterwards. Anyway. <laughs> really? So... <laughs> So uh, the three-way switch doesn't work. It doesn't work with three-way switches, which is limited. We had when I when we first picked it up, you know, I, I read the reviews on it, and it looked really cool. And I I knew that going into it that it didn't handle three-way switch, but I didn't think it would bug me as much as I as it did. We wanted it for our main light in our in our uh, living room, okay. so that we can turn it on and off when we're watching movies yeah. and and whatever. And uh, the other thing is. Um, so and so it didn't work for that but then also it comes as a single switch and if you have I don't have the big toggle light switches like you have here right. in more modern homes see cuz I'm poor and I live in an old home as he tries to backpedal hey yeah. my my home is brand new and I don't get those switches either oh so. you didn't you didn't nope. you designed that entire house and you didn't do that whoa whoa no I did not it's oh. a dis- <laughs> it's oh. <laughs> yeah my yeah. wife did <laughs> <laughs> anyway so it comes as a single switch, and it's about it's it is the same size as those toggle switches. But if I wanted to, if I had wanted to use the switch in one of the three three switch bays that I have mm-hmm. panel, uh, panels on the wall, I would have had to go and buy a new plate mm-hmm. and buy all new switches for the other two yeah. that were in there. So we ended up putting it in my bedroom, ah, uh, where you don't have a three way. Where switch. I don't have a three way. Where, where you don't have a three. Where the three ways where he never has a three way. Where the three ways don't happen. Ah. and uh, and we. Uh, it's it's been great. I tried a whole bunch of apps, and uh, I've actually f- so first of all, Wemo, your app for Android sucks horribly. That's oh. all. I I could not get it to connect with my Nexus Six P. You're supposed to go in. So ne- Android does something called smart network switching, where it will automatically try and toggle you between Wi-Fi and cellular data all right. the time. And what happens? The way the switch works is it. The first thing it does when it when it when you power it on, it sends out. Uh, a 2.4 gigahertz wireless channel that you join. Mm-hmm. So you're on its network. It's like a it's a broadcasting. Wait, wait. Okay. The Wemo doesn't connect to your home network. It you in order to this is for initial setup. This is oh okay. Yeah. So the first thing you do is you hop onto its network and then you run the Wemo app and it's supposed to detect it. Say, oh yeah, I'm on my network. And the rule the instructions uh, in the app. So the app did not work at all for me. And they say, oh, if you're having problems, go here and check this out. And it takes you out to a web page. Uh, it's, a, it's a pre-installed, actually, site since, you're, since the Wemo connection has no internet access. You're just on a local network. And it tells you to disable the smart network switching on your Android phone. Right. Well, Nexus 6P does not have the option to do that. Or using, their, their setup page takes you to an older version of Android. I'm mm. running 7.1.2 Nougat or whatever. 
And uh, so it did It did not work. And I tried forever, and I tried forever, and I tried forever. And Did you, you try forever? Yeah. And if you notice at the end of the video, I'm a little bit sweaty and flustered because I was, like, running up and down the stairs, like, trying to... Anyway, I don't know why I was doing that, trying to connect, but I thought maybe it was my router or something. Having problems, even though that makes no sense now that I think about it. And so I ended up grabbing my wife's iPhone, and it worked immediately. It just works? It just works because iPhone... Doesn't have that. Uh, they pan. Switching. They pander to the lowest common denominator in users. I'm just going to say that right there. Well, no, no. So yeah, the they iPhone, do. No, no, they the do. iPhone is easier to develop for because they don't have nearly as many models out as Android. Yeah, well, that, that's the main problem. That's also true. That's also true. But we're going to we're going to emphasize on lowest common denominator. Yeah. They anyway. <laughs> so they so it, it connected right up, and as soon as it connected right up, my my Android picked it up. <laughs> Jaren is. Jaren gave is, me the finger. This is the yeah. third time this month. <laughs> But uh, you're keeping track monthly because so, it's funny. So if you're running an older version of Android, probably it looks like it looked like Marshmallow on the website. Mm -hmm. But if you can turn off smart network switching, then you it would probably work for you. But it didn't for me, and it was really frustrating. Uh, but once I did, it worked. It is really slow because it sends a device state switch command instead of like cutting power. Obviously, the switch has a control panel on in internally that says it's either a one or a zero on or off. James, are you not? No, I'm. <sighs> Just relaxing over there? No, I'm just relaxing. Okay, because it sounded like a sigh of... No, oh, I'm not okay. sighing. Okay, anyway. Uh, so, the, what, so now that's the, that's the switch itself. It works great once it's working. Um, the only, my only complaint with the app, besides what I just said about not connecting, is the speed at which it turns the light on and off. It's annoying. Hmm. If you have wireless stuff, if, like... Okay, hold on, hold on. Wait, say, say that let's, again? Let's do a test, okay? I'm going actually... to press a button and you be the light. Boop! Click. Boop. Click. There's you over really a second need a, of lag? Do you, do yeah, there's like a second and a half so of lag. Why I, do you need the light to turn on so fast? Because I'm I'm afraid of the dark. <laughs> His honesty is so both I, refreshing and hilarious. I recently got <laughs> Philips Hue um, with the Hue, uh, what's it called, the bridge? The hub. Yeah. yeah, the hub. It, it requires a hub for the lights to connect uh, to. It is really quick. You hit the yeah. button, it turns on immediately. That's what I wanted. And that's what I reviewed because I, I was thinking of the Hue when I looked at the Switch. But mm -hmm. So there's two ways you can control your lights. What if there's you a, have... There's a Switch on the wall. You can either Imagine switch to the wall will. or you can do the power outlet at the at the light, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So there's those two areas where you can adjust the light. And so I almost went with the outlet because I don't... It's an adapter that you plug into the... You actually screw into the socket and then put the light bulb into that. I almost went with that because I have multiple lights all over the house that I want to be able to turn on and off. Yeah. Independently of the switch and make my own unique lighting atmosphere, right. but I ended up going to the switch and so I went and got the widget. They make a widget. Um I don't know if it's Wemo that actually develops it. I think it's somebody else, but it's Belkin makes this product and and the widget seemed to work better. Hmm. Um my only problem was that the widget only worked when I was on my local network. Oh, you can't do it. You can't do it across the world. Over the WAN. Over the WAN. And I could do it over the WAN with the Wemo app, but take that one second delay and push it up to like three seconds. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then sometimes it would disconnect and wouldn't see the device over the WAN. And So after you told me you were getting the Wemo, I started researching smart switches as well because it sounds cool. Mm -hmm. There really isn't that much competition out there. No. Like I, I try to find one that works with HomeKit. Uh, Apple's smart home pl platform, pretty much nothing. Yeah, I you know, there wasn't a lot of options out there when I looked either. Well, it's just Apple wanted to get another crappy app out there. And uh, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's Belkin. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's Belkin just co cornering the market here or whatever. But uh, it there seems like definitely some room for improvement out there. So what do you give it? Um, out of ten, I'll give it a seven. I mean, it's seven. A, yeah, I'll give it a seven just because it it works. So it's above average. Is it it's above aver average. Average is it works. Is yeah. it consistent? Do you does it ever yeah. drop connection? No. So your main complaint is just that it's slow. My main complaint is the overall architecture of it. I mean, like at for what it does and what it's advertised, what it does, mm -hmm. it's a seven. It, it's above average for it works as designed and. And I'm impressed by the technology How, in general. If if you weren't gifted this for the Thrifty Fifty from our gracious Patreon backers, patreon.com forward slash gadget spot, um, would you still feel the same if you had to pay? No. If, if it wasn't free, I would have gone for the sockets for sure. 
I think I would have gone. You would have taken it back. I would have taken it back and got the sockets and tried those. And you would still give it a seven, even though you would take it back. Mm, Yeah, I. I mean, like I said, it is for what it does. It's a seven. It's. What are you getting for your thrifty fifty? I don't know. Probably a uh, Wi-Fi extender. That's what I'm thinking. I got a free one for you if you want it. Is that it a good one? Discount uh-huh. that defeats the fifty part. Oh, yeah. Jared, <laughs> it's free, but is it good? Is it thrifty? And I don't 50? want it if it's not good. So the only other, the only part of that story is that the the guys from NetBeast reached out to me directly on Twitter. One, of, it was just, just a they saw that we uh, that we tag that we tweeted at Wemo and actually Wemo tweeted back, right? Which was pretty cool. Uh, but then he, he reached out and he's like, "Hey, try this out." And I so I installed it because I'm like I'm looking for any app that really that works better than their built-in one because the main complaint is that their app sucks. It's not the device. I feel like it's the speed at which the app hmm. connects. Okay. And so I tried this NetBeast, and I installed Yeti. And Yeti is a multiple device connector, kind of if you have different smart devices. And um, not compatible with the Belkin light switch. But what was really cool... Um, which the, I, we mean the Wemo, the Wemo, yeah, sorry, okay. Belkin Wemo. There, that's who makes it. So the Wemo, it's not compatible with the Wemo light switch, and so I get on their support, and I'm like, oh, I'll try out their app and try, you know, talk to support. And I actually think I don't think I talked to the creator of the app, but there's only a thousand downloads of of uh, Yeti, uh-huh. and so I'm pretty sure I was talking to somebody that was there because it was pretty early in the morning. It was like six in the morning my time, and and we had a straight up conversation over this support chat about the app and he's like well cool do you mind if i get your email or i know i didn't give him my email but <laughs> um <clears throat> but we we chatted and, and their support was really cool and, and it was really cool to have somebody reach out like that and there's check out yeti if you've got some smart stuff it was a cool app it just wasn't so it's compatible. kind of like kind of like a like the uh, one ring yeah, it uh, a compiler of yeah. smart home devices. It works, it works with the smart the Wemo smart socket. So if you've got that, hmm. that's a wall plug that that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'd I'd probably go. The only problem with the with the light switch socket add ons that w- I was going to get instead were I have like three light fixtures because I'm so rich and. Uh, <laughs> In and, your three-story house, yeah, with your like five kids, yeah, two, with your awesome wife, mm, and you and have his a dog. gigantic car. Oh, yeah. that car is so big. Yeah, I like that car. It even smells like it smells vegetables. Like, tomatoes. Like, I don't like how. <laughs> oh yeah, that car. Uh, I don't like how my how much my car spends in gas, but I do like the size of it. Anyway, uh, but they're like for they're thirty. They were thirty-five bucks a socket. And so to get the same performance in a light switch would you know to fill all three of those would have oh, been yeah, yeah. would have been more. So or I you just get a smart bulb and forget about the socket. Yeah, I thought about that too, but then I'm still How putting much do three bulbs. So I was, I was just looking at them uh, twenty bucks. So you you could get one from TP Link that doesn't need a hub for like twenty five. I think if you get Philips, 20, 20 bucks. Philips Hue. I I just bought one off of Meh. Forty five dollars came with two. And, and what the is bridge. meh? Meh dot com. It's it's like Woot. It's the creators was, of Woot. That's it was cool. what Woot used to be. Yeah. Before they sold to Amazon. Did you know that? Hmm? Yes. Yeah. Did you guys know that? I didn't know that. I did not know that. Woot bot was purchased by Amazon a few <laughs> years ago. I'd be surprised if Woot was purchased by anything. Anyway. What's interesting is if, uh, on a side note with Woot.com now, if you check the prices on whatever they're selling, it's usually the same price and sometimes cheaper on Amazon. Yeah. If you look at what they're selling, which is kind of a bummer, like yeah, why would I, you do that? I never check it. I check Meh every day. I still check Meh. Woot because once in a while they will have something that undercuts themselves on Amazon, but it's not very rare. Yeah, you but mean, the, it okay. is very rare. Or yeah, it is very rare. Man, you're just lying all over the place. <laughs> Another correction. Uh, okay, we're I think got, in order we've got to talk about PS4s real quick. Okay, okay. We talked about Xboxes. Uh, so the PS4 is apparently a pretty great roach motel. <laughs> what? Yeah. Is that where roaches like to hang out? Yep. So uh, there's a. I read an article here that's on. It was on Kotaku. It was. It was done uh, about a repair center in. I think it, I can't remember where it said. I think it was New York. It was a big city anyway. The, Lower East Side of Manhattan. There you go, New York, Manhattan, and uh, they they now have an automatic thirty five dollar surcharge if you bring in a ps4 to get uh to get fixed because 
the majority of the PS4s they work on are infested with cockroaches. Really? Yeah. That's and is that so why awesome. they're bring, is that why they're bringing them in to be repaired? Yeah. Nobody knows when the, usually when they bring them in, they don't know that the problem is cockroaches have died and been shocked and exploded in there, breaking <laughs> the power supply. So they literally have bugs in the machine. You literally. Awesome. And poop. Oh, it's buggy. The whole the, everything comes full circle right there. And the the they estimate that uh, the biggest problem is is because with the PS4 the grates for airflow are on the bottom and they're larger than an Xbox one. So cockroaches can get in easier Uh, and they love the small, dark, warm spaces, which is like an inside of a console. And so they have big problems (laughs) with people's PS fours in, in big cities getting infested with cockroaches. So they say basically you're, uh, what you want to do is keep your PS four in a more, an open area, not in a cupboard, where cockroaches can run around that you won't see. And their biggest uh, recommendation is just clean your dang apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so if your PS4 doesn't work, it might be due Bug- to some major bugs. It might be major. buggy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh! All right. So interesting, interesting fact there. Now, uh, uh, James. Does Matt only sell one thing at a time? One thing a day. Yep. That's how Woot used to be. Really? Yeah. This is super interesting. I might get this for my wife. And I can say it out loud because she's not uh, listening. She never listens. Uh, Impulse by. Yes, which, it's back. Uh, I met um, all y'all's wives the other day that we had our uh, Gadget Spot Summit. And uh, ev- although everybody's wife is awesome, uh, Olivia, hello. Thank you for listening. She thought I was a fat Justin Gordon Levitt. Le- Levitt. <laughs> J- uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt? <laughs> sure. Not Justin Govern Levitt. <laughs> I have no idea what that just got so butchered. What were you gonna say, Tony? <laughs> now she's got all sorts of new material. <laughs> I swear I'm having a freaking seizure today. Uh, James, I just wanted you to talk a little bit about how you finally, at the age of 27, figured out what a QWERTY keyboard is. Yeah, I didn't know what that actually. Meant. <laughs> <laughs> I was like sitting there. I uh, read that. Qu- I was like QWERTY. That's that's fun because you know how like some words you just get used to. You just like see them so much that you don't even like ask anymore. Like, what does this mean? And I was like staring at my keyboard the other day. I was like, Q W E R T Y. <gasps> what? Oh, I get it. It's 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 the it's the um. I didn't know it was possible top for your keyboard. anyone it's to not know that top top one two three four five six uh, buttons on your keyboard. Now, if I'm getting, being completely honest, I think I was twenty three or 24 when i first realized so that. are you serious age. i had no uh, nobody okay let's be honest first of all qwerty is not the actual name of that style of keyboard i can't remember what the real and name why would is, you need to know QWERTY. that secondly qwerty the term qwerty keyboard only became popular with the advent of smartphones because they had full qwerty keyboards on them i guess so, like, i guess and, i can't say too much because i i was like 20 something when i realized the beatles had a B-E-A-T, beat, you know, for the beat of the song. Beat, Oles. Yeah. I did not know that. What does the Oles come from? I was 30 it's, it's a play on the word of Beatles, but with a beat. Like you know what? Making a beat to the to the music. I was 37 when I figured that out. I was 31. Because it just happened. <laughs> what? Right you guys now. didn't know that? You know yeah. what? Oh, I don't feel I, dumb anymore. I don't yeah. listen to the Beatles. I think uh, they're not very good. So They have a couple of good songs. You're going to get our yeah, podcast but... canceled. <laughs> I appreciate the Beatles for what they did. I think they. I were... completely agree with you, <laughs> but it has nothing to do with the name. Yes, it's true. Yes, <laughs> we're already true. on a wa- wa- one watch list now. Just say something negative about Disney and Elon Musk, and uh, it will, our podcast will go down the. I would, down the pie hole. I would never say anything disrespectful about Elon Musk. The guy's too crazy wild. He is too See? great. Beat. Well, uh, I know how, you, how it's spelled. How do you spell normal beetle? Two e's. Two e's. Oh, <laughs> I've spelled it wrong before. <laughs> In a public setting. Oh, okay. This is uh, cool. I like this one. Hit on that. We've, oh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Xbox updated its dashboard for on the Xbox One. It is much, much better. Uh, I don't like how the home button doesn't go straight home anymore. Okay, I'm okay. Uh, yes, I, I, I slightly agree that. with that. Everything but else I like except for that. That you know what me. you know what you sacrificed, uh, or you know what you gained by having it not go back to the home screen. More annoyance. Way more speed. That that Xbox dashboard is so much more responsive than it was before, especially mm. turning on the system and then hitting the button. It just goes boom. It's right to it. It's snappy now. Well, I mainly use my Xbox for streaming services, and so I use a remote, my Logitech Harmony. So with that, it's it's kind of annoying. With a controller, I could see it being not that bad. 
Because I think all you have to push is one more button and it goes back to the home screen. Now you have to push the button. You push then, the home button. Then you have to click right to go to home and then select home. Is it two? Okay, maybe yeah. it's two. Yeah, that's a couple more. But anyway, I can see how you'd be frustrated with that for the use of changing streaming programs. Or, yeah, streaming apps. But for everyone else, it's but, been great. Yeah, because the it, gaming aspect. It sped up that dashboard so much. Cortana's still a piece of crap, but everything else Who about uses it, that anyway? On I've the tried. I, I wanted to up. so bad. I wanted it to be good. I wanted it to be so good. Oh, Especially now that no one has Connects. Yeah. I know. It's ridiculous. They... If you needed any more proof that Connect was going the way of the Dodo, it's the fact that the Scorpio doesn't have a Connect port either. Or the right. Xbox One S. Or the <laughs> Xbox One S. I mean, if it's just a and, pretend that never happened. And and they're not even giving out free uh, adapters, USB adapters with the Scorpio like they did with the, with the Xbox One S for the first, what, six months that it was out? Anyway. Uh, I'm so glad you guys told me about <clears throat> meh.com. The only thing that I'm bummed about is that our listeners can't go there today and get a uh, pearl strand of necklace for their wives. That's m e h dot com. Getting a getting your wife a pearl necklace. We're not sponsored. Yep, by that's them. pretty cool. Nope, we're not sponsored by anybody. <laughs> Sponsorships are open and considered, though. Uh, let's see, Owen. Oh, you look really excited about this in the uh, in the list. Megabots. Oh yeah. Hey, so I follow those guys, the Megabots. We've talked about it before. This is the giant mechanized robot war that's going to. Was come. this America versus Japan? Mm-hmm. So is it ha- actually going to happen? August. They finally settled all the all the venue issues. They're keeping the venue a secret for now, but they have confirmed it's happening in August. How are so they going to show it's it? In the new, it's in the old Rio Stadium, right? I don't know. How are they going to show it? Uh, I think they're, they've been streaming the channels on their YouTube or the show. They've been re- they've been doing they're, episodes on their YouTube. They're channel. gonna have cameras there, Jaren. They'll let the camera people know where can, it's gonna be. Can we place bets on this really quick before it starts? My bet is that they get there and they can't get one of them to turn on. <laughs> I think that's an accurate. I'm yeah. not taking. I'm not going against that bet. Yeah, yeah. I like right. I like your idea of the real stadium though, like a post apocalyptic waste. Right, land. right. Yeah. That, that would be, be awesome. Oh, that'd be great. But yeah, where's they, the uh, Rio Stadium? In Rio? Rio Olympics. Oh, Rio Olympics. How it's like all... Egg on your face, you look so dumb. (laughs) Man. Because what's the name of our stadium over here for uh, Real Salt Lake? Rio Tinto. Okay. Well, it's Rio Rio Tinto. Stadium. Thank you. Oh, that's along. Real. You know, no, he has you there. It's the Rio Stadium. Rio Tinto. It's Rio Tinto, it's Rio Tinto but some people just call it Rio. Anyway. Sh- oh, what is Sorry. <laughs> She whiz. I, uh, I was a little excited. I thought it was going to be in Salt Lake. Be like, yeah, I'm going yes. to this. Uh, so they have. So they have. Uh, they've been showing off the. They've been showing off the. Uh, the weapons on this thing. It's got a big old chainsaw. Chainsaw, rip saw. Are they not allowed to have projectiles on this? I don't think they are. I don't are. think you could put missile launchers. That would be they, bad. The, for, the MK would... the MK two had like. Uh, four inch tubes of paintball that they used for paintball. Oh, that's used, right. They shot paint. There. I still don't know how they're going to not kill the pilots. I as well with a ripsaw. I don't understand how they're not going to severely damage the pilots. Well, is there going to be a pilot inside or is I, it remote controlled? I, I need to watch the latest. I episode thought I thought the pilot was inside. We yeah. need to bring back a if, fight to the death. If the yeah. pilot's inside, that is straight up Pacific Rim, right? Yes, there. that's what I'm saying. Well, look look at the battle. picture. It looks like there's a cockpit. Yeah, that's crazy. They yep. need to enter the rift. <laughs> exactly. But uh with that, I guarantee one, one's not gonna start, and two, one is gonna overpower the other one and shut it down within a few seconds. Yeah. And I guarantee like it's, gonna, it's gonna be like a decisive I think it will be just, too. Oh, they hit the battery instead. It'll no. it'll be that or it'll be one of them's just built so much stronger than the other one. Because I've seen before where some guys try to build robots that are really sleek and high tech and cool looking and have like. Oh, one you're talking about weapon. that one show where they build like itty bitty robots? Yeah, yeah, yeah Robot yeah. Wars. And then you have other ones that just, they're built with like a sledgehammer as the weapon and yeah. it just comes in, <laughs> crunch, and it's yeah. game over. You yeah, know? it's either going to be, uh, the Japanese one is going to be like really floppy and flimsy but really cool looking. Yeah. And the American one's going to have like a hemi in it and just like squish it in two seconds yep. with American muscle. It'll or, be so cool though for that two seconds. Or. The Japanese one is going to be able to do backflips and breakdance and chop <laughs> ho- its that's head what off. I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. It, and then you hope it pulls out a katana and it's just like... Whoosh, whoosh, yeah. The American one is going to be covered in Xbox logos and just right. shut down. <laughs> yeah. Blue Xbox, screen of death. Xbox and, and, and Red Bull. It'll be like, oh, it's time for, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll be like, it's time for a system update. Right when you want to use it. It's going gonna, gonna to have a bunch of advertisements just pop up. Yeah. And if you want to play the video game version of this, play Titanfall 2. Yeah. 
So anyway, I'm super excited because uh, I I like the I like this genre, and they're hoping to use this as proof that this is like a useful, a viable, a option. viable. How cage. much money was poured into this? Uh, they got a kick. So after their first, after they first started showing off their MK2, they went and did a Kickstarter and got funded for five hundred thousand. Is this so the American team or the Japanese the American team? American team. I don't know much on the Japanese team at all. The See, Japanese team are like this. Is they our did. Time to shine. The Japanese team did just put out some sort of. Uh, there was a little bit of trash talking going back and forth. Well, could uh, the American team understand them? No, they had it translated. <laughs> I but, would kill you. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so it was. Uh, it's pretty cool. You should, I have the links in the in the show notes. You should go follow their follow their page, and then I've also linked the latest episode. It's pretty cool. See, I'm just imagining their trash talk. And if you've ever watched any uh, anime, if you <laughs> wa- if you watch the Japanese version versus the English version, yep. and you listen to the voiceover, the Japanese version sounds so much angrier yeah. and intense. And then it shows the English dubbing, and he's just yeah. like, you know what? I think that's a terrible idea. Yep. And in Japanese, it's all super angry. <laughs> <sounding>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this looks really cool. Sushi. That huge robot. Oh, man. Uh, Another thing that's crazy about, about that is think about think about if if they're actually able to build an effective battle robot for half a million dollars, yeah. like effective and good, um, and it and it's feasible to like put out into a battle situation. Yeah, and yeah, they're uh, called tanks. That's the thing. A tank. Costs much more than five hundred thousand dollars. I guess. And so, if you could build a battle robot for half a million, and actually uh, manufacture it, so the cost would come down even more. I would, we could be could, driving battle could, robots to work. I'm not saying that, but yeah, you, you I'm can see it. the future of warfare being giant battle robots. See, so cool. and you, you say like Titanfall, and uh, what was the other example that you guys? Pacific gave? Rim. Pacific, Pacific Rim. Rim. I'm thinking more like the Matrix. Remember in the Animatrix where they actually had, or even in uh, the Matrix, the third installment where they're uh, in the big suits. Like, oh, yeah. There were three. Are you they for were. real? Yeah, yeah there were three. I, ama- thought, I thought there was only one. No, nope, there was three amazing movies. There was one amazing movie. There, <laughs> there were two mediocre movies. Three amazing revolutionary movies. Okay. <laughs> but, um, okay, okay. I actually read up on the Japanese version. They so they their their version of the of their previous generation, the one before the fight. Uh, you could actually buy that. You could actually order one. Oh, really? For one point three million dollars, if you wanted, they would build you one. We. See, that, I think James. I think you're thinking of more like an exosuit. Yes, that like, should uh, be the thing that we have a, a gadget spot meetup. We should meet up and then stream it together. Yeah, that could be fun. Stream that the, would be the awesome. battle. Yeah. Um, what? Like we should have a gadget spot meet up with the listeners, like anybody that lives around where we at. Where, where we at? Where we at? And do what? And watch this watch uh, the robot mechanized. Battle. Yeah, watch. Oh, the, okay. I yeah, thought you meant like do our is, own mechanized battle. No. But it might How be anti. These are two big gadgets. But like they we are. said, it it might be anticlimactic and only last for two seconds. Then it would be fun to be around a lot of people when it's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> My, anti- we'll, my we'll antisocial we'll fears are are, are are rising. We'll discuss this offline. I'll get you. I'll get you a nice cardigan to wear. Okay, okay? a nice suit. There'll have to be something cardigan. there for me for free, other to overcome my social. What anxiety. do you want for free? I don't know, but it has to be something. What over. if I buy you a hamburger? Is it free? Yeah. Okay. Well, free for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'll cost me a little bit of money, but That's you know, as long as we get to see some people. Go on. No, that's the end of that conversation. Oh, okay. All right. Uh... I can hit on real quick. I'm not going to go into detail, but it's been interesting watching AMD Ryzen 5 launch. Uh, this is the price point that was that AMD put out to compete with the i5 from Intel. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, you done sneezing? <laughs> Jaren's face looks so weird when he, he sneezes. He had like a 45 second wind up to that sneeze. Have you guys ever seen what a cat looks like when it smells something really bad? It like opens his mouth and like kind of like backs that. up. Yeah, it looks exactly like that. <laughs> anyway. It sure felt good. I bet it did. Sneezes are the best. Um, so for 250 bucks, you can get the Ryzen 5 1600X, which is a 6 core, 12 thread uh, CPU. And it is priced at ten dollars more than the unlocked i5 7600K, which is a four core, four thread. That's pretty good. So you can get twelve threads instead of four. And then you can go buy a new motherboard to make it work. Wait, wait. So just like sheets, the thread count, the higher the thread count, the better. Yes, just Got like it. sheets. So anyway, um, is it I, made of Egyptian cotton? I, it is not. It's made of. What's silicon. the thread count? 
12. I already said. Yeah, well, a, we discussed this. Listening. We talked about this already. James. I was. I Pay bought. Attention. I bought thumb grips for my Xbox. <laughs> Jeez. I'm gonna have to take away your computer. No. Yeah. No. 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 Um. Anyway, I read a bunch of. I've watched many YouTube videos and uh, read a few reviews on the Ryzen 5 stuff. You have the 1600X, the 1600, the 5 1500X, and the 1500, and the 1400. The 1500X and the 1500, I believe, are. Uh, Oh crap! I don't want to say it if I'm wrong. I think they're four core, eight thread though. Um, Are they? I'm not entirely sure, which is why I shouldn't have said it out loud. Wait, what? Which one? I have it up. You have it up. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the 1600 X is six core, twelve, 12 threads, 12 and the 1500 X four core. Okay, eight that thread. dropped. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, with that, basically the reviews I've been reading, and I do want to upgrade soon and i want to do an amd ryzen build uh but i'm going to go with our with the 7 series and i want to do the 1700x and just overclock it but so far this uh, 5 series has turned out to be quite quite good bang for your buck wise because you're getting i5 uh performance uh equal to sometimes worse on certain games uh usually equal or sometimes a little bit better uh but then as far as uh work goes like uh rendering videos and and multimedia stuff and calculating whatever you need to that your cpu usually calculates for work related tasks it far and away outstrips anything the i5 can do so if they got <clears throat> excuse me have they got pre-builds out there yet like with the ryzen stuff yeah i believe there's a few companies out there they're like um, building with it in you'd have to look at it though i think i read that cyber power pc has some ryzen stuff i think origin has some ryzen mm, stuff okay Anyway, uh, don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, it, it's amazing. It's nice to see AMD. They're not coming out with the R5 and, or with the, the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7 series and just completely crushing Intel in, in everything. But they are coming out and price to performance, they are taking, it, taking Intel to task for sure. Right. And uh, as far as usually how well it performs compared to the Intel stuff, it is usually on par, sometimes slightly better, sometimes slightly worse. But uh, and we talked the about amount that. of money that you're paying less than Intel makes right. it a good buy. And we talked about that. That's a lot towards maybe the developers not quite building towards the Ryzen yeah. architecture yet. Right? And and there's a few, just in the 30 days that Ryzen's been out, there's been uh, several BIOS updates, firmware updates that have increased things quite a bit, as well as um, specific game developers have started working on things. Ashes of the Singularity, which is a huge DirectX 12 benchmark game. I don't even call it a game anymore because I never hear anyone playing it. It's always we used it for a benchmark. No one, no one plays Ashes they of the Singularity. Use it to, they it's, use it's it a to benchmark. Hurt, they use it to hurt processors. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they released an update for it uh, two weeks ago or a week ago, and it increased Ryzen 7 performance by 30 percent, and it put it almost jump. almost on par with the Intel stuff, and they were far behind Intel on that specific game before. But it just goes to show that, yes, with optimizations, new firmware, new BIOS, um, things finally taking advantage of this new architecture, you're going to get performance on par with Intel, and you're going to pay quite a bit less. So good for AMD. Huzzah. Tony said that would be quick. That was quick compared to normal. Speaking of quick, <laughs> are you wearing Lamborghini tennis shoes? No, they're Ferrari. Are you wearing Ferrari tennis shoes? Yeah. I got Where did you get those shoes? They're Pumas, man. Puma teams up with uh, Ferrari and Lamborghini, Porsche, companies like that, and makes some shoes. Owen some, buys... Some, sometimes you can find them on sale. I got these for like 40 bucks, I think. Where? Puma.com. Oh. Owen buys a lot of floors. Tony buys Ferrari shoes. Ferrari what do you shoes. buy? Yeah. <laughs> Jaron buys Apple and Sony. Oh. James just sits Expensive over, in their own right. James just sits over there and impulse buys the whole show. A whole bunch of small things. <laughs> I like my I like my my stuff. You like stuffs. <laughs> I'm a nester, so like I collect small things. Just put it all around you. <laughs> yeah. Mm. As long as I know where stuff is. These things will never leave me. This is still on my <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you said you welcomed them. <laughs> These things will never leave me. <laughs> Owen has been so mean today. He's usually the nice that's, one. It's <laughs> so, quite weird. <laughs> so that's why you have to be careful with sociopaths. They could just flip a switch and become a completely yep. different person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's speechless. He doesn't have anything to say. 
All right. Uh, what's left on the list? I think we're we're pretty close to wrapping up. <laughs> that was Owen. a really funny joke. Owen was like there. I tried to stay mad. <laughs> it was a good one. <laughs> it was a good joke. Is there hurt. anything else you wanted to hit on that? <laughs> just uh, enough. Just, just enough. Just enough. It hit just right. Uh, I only have one, I have another PSA. Change your freaking password for your Internet of Things connected devices. There's a new uh, bot out there, um, and there's actually two of them. And they are out there destroying those devices, doing what's called a PDOS, a PDOS. Mm-hmm. You know Why do people you, do this you know stuff? What a D, you know what a DDoS is, right? Some Dedicated. people just like to see the world burn. So we know what a, we know what a denial of... Terrible Michael Caine impression? It was terrible. <laughs> it was Hello. terrible. <laughs> I like fish and chips. So, so we know a DDoS attack is, or is a de- <laughs> denial of service, right? Or yeah. DDoS, de- dedicated denial. Well, PDOS is a permanent, they're calling it permanent denial of service. So this new bot goes out, and you guys know, you guys remember the Mirai attack that happened? You guys remember that, what it was? Yeah. The Mirai attack is where a bot, there was a virus that went around that took over the Internet of Things, and it smashed D- uh, Dyn- Dyn DNS, which is one of the main DNS registers in the U.S., and basically the country didn't have the Internet for a day or two while Dyn... I mean, it doesn't w- sound permanent to me at all. Well... No, this one's not permanent. But this, but uh, this was it connected to anonymous? I don't think so. I don't know. They never said. Um, anyway, so it plays on that same idea of going out and finding default passwords for your Internet of Things connected devices, your Samsung refrigerator, ref- refrigerator. Sorry, LG washers, all your stuff, LG right? Fridges. And then this new one, it doesn't try and control it like the Mirai bot does. This one actually just runs code and wipes it out, bricks it. Oh. It bricks your device. So, change your default password on any of your smartphones. Oh, so devices. that is permanent. That yeah, that is straight up just wanting to watch the yeah. world burn. Yeah, they don't there's, even. The, there's the, no gain. They don't gain anything there's from no, doing there's that. There's no gain except for destruction. Jeez, so. still laughing at your last joke. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. But you are weeping inside. Uh, so just pass over my other two things I put down. Whatever. I didn't uh, get to that yet, Jaron. What have you got for us? Nah, it's time to leave anyway. Oh. No. Right? <laughs> That's too bad. All right. No, do you want to go over uh, your, your lawnmower? Oh, yeah, I got a lawnmower. Yeah, let's talk about your lawnmower. Normally, I wouldn't consider this a gadget, but it's... Oh, you uh, do have a lawn now. But it, in this case, it is. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a battery-powered lawnmower. And is it from that green company? I don't know. The box had green color on it. Yep. Uh, anyway, normally in the past, battery-powered lawnmowers have been terrible, but uh, I decided to get one after reading some reviews, and it's actually not that bad. So I got an Ego 21-inch, <laughs> 56-volt, self-propelled lawnmower. A glowing review from Jaren. Actually, <laughs> not that bad. Well, because you're mowing a lawn. No one wants to mow a lawn. Right. You're already <laughs> unhappy, so that puts you at a four out of the box. Yeah. So... Um, the the first time I mowed the lawn, I ran out of battery, and I was only halfway through. Ooh, that's frustrating. Yeah, and uh, I'm like, oh, this thing sucks. But I uh, raised up the the uh, deck of it, so I went from a level two to level three, so it's cutting a little bit higher on the grass. And uh, ever since then, it's been great. Now I, you have a two tiered grass. What, what if you want to? What if you wanted that that low? I guess this was just because it was so long. Well, right? I I was mulching at the same time. The, oh, the grass yeah. wasn't being put into a bag. So mulching it will will take more more battery power. And was so, it because it was its first charge? And it could have been a, its first charge as well. So there's many factors it could have been. But since then, I've done it three or four times after that. I've been able to mow the whole lawn. On Did you get a uh, side blower to just blow the lawn out, or do you still mulch it? I still mulch it, hmm. and it's it's been perfectly fine. How and long does it take to recharge? 45 minutes. Dude, that's Yeah, so bad. the first time when I did run out, I just charged it for 45 minutes, went back out. It wasn't that bad at all. Uh, but... I forgot what I was going to say. Is it self-propelled? It is self-propelled. You already so, said that. that yeah, takes it takes more batteries. Now it. Now you know what it's like to be me. Because it's. I don't like this. Because it's <laughs> because it's battery powered. It's not very heavy. It's like maybe forty, fifty pounds at most. Mm-hmm. And so pushing it without the self-propelled function isn't that hard. But w- adding the self-propelled function, it's it Just handles like, like a dream. Is this the first lawnmower you've ever it, owned? No, I've had another one. Uh, but I lived in a much smaller. Uh, lot of land lot in my previous house so i went from like a 0.08 acre to about a quarter of an acre so i'm mowing the whole the whole quarter acre on on the whole battery nice. so it's it lasts what kind of batteries hey. are in that thing lithium ion awesome. hey owen what's it yeah. like to live on a multiple acre lot 
I don't know. I don't live on a multiple acre lot. Oh, I just assumed. Well, no, he has multi level levels. House. <laughs> you guys could. No. Nope. Whatever. Okay. No. No, Quit trying to get back at me. Yeah, Just right. accept the sting right. that I gave you earlier before right. I have to give you another one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the threats, they're coming. <laughs> Sounds great. Oh, so I'm it's a good good piece, of, good piece of machinery. Um, How's I would, the cost compared to a nice gas mower? I bet it's It's good. about the same as a nice gas mower. Hmm. So it has advantages. It, I don't think it cuts as evenly as a good gas mower, but... I'm not a yard snob, so I don't care. What if you wanted to buy another battery to have one charging while you mow? Yeah, you could do that. It'd How much probably are the be batteries? probably a hundred to hundred fifty dollars hmm. for an extra battery. Does it have a USB port on the side of it to charge other things? <laughs> no. Oh, oh you, well. you could charge your phone <laughs> while you're. Like char- you laughed. I, 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 I thought all intently looking yeah, at you. Yeah, I thought, I thought, I thought you were joking. Yeah, Tony's but. not being serious. What a, what a dumb question. Oh, he's being serious. <laughs> But, uh, I, I actually uh, really wanted to know myself. <laughs> a cool feature of it, since it's not gas powered, you can fold the thing. You could uh, uh, fold it up vertically, so it doesn't take as much room in your in your garage. Oh, yeah, you don't uh, have to worry about oil or yeah, don't have to worry no about gas oil leaking out of it while it's hanging there. Since I have nothing, no knowledge of how engines work, it's great for me. Hmm. I would give it. It feels like I give everything an eight or an eight and a half. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. It's, it's not perfect. I wish it lasted a tiny bit longer, even though I can get the whole yard done. So I'd probably say eight. Why would you want it to last longer if you can already get the whole yard? Because I have slight range anxiety because of the first time. Mm. Yeah. Range anxiety. Plus, he has to keep his lawn at a different height now than he would have normally done it because yeah. of the battery. As a result, you have to cut your lawn more often. No, I still do it once a week. Oh, you're one of those people. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Let your lawn get all tall and overgrown. <laughs> Tony, hide, you don't even have a lawn. Can hide snakes in there. My name's Tony. I have an HOA. Just slithering around snakes. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's what scared the snake out was that you mowed around his home. You mowed his home a- around. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Why? Just so you don't know. Don't touch me. <laughs> just so you know, James, mowing lawns can cause snakes to come out. It's true. Never mow a lawn again. You guys are messing. <laughs> 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 all right. Was there anything else anyone wanted to talk about? No? We good? We're good. All right. That's uh, that's a wrap for this week. We will see you guys in two weeks. Owen, take us out. Hey. We hope you care. We hope you care. Oh. Oh. How's that feel, Owen? It's not great. I know. Yeah, it doesn't feel good, it's does not it? not great, is it? <laughs>